I'm very excited about this video because we not only get to share our experience with you, but some of you guys decided that you wanted to share your own story with everybody. And for that, you are very brave. I know <laughs> the first couple times I made a video and went on YouTube and told everybody about what I was going through, I was terrified. So I just want to say that for everybody that shared their contribution to this video, thank you for being brave. Thank you for sharing your story. And thank you for being part of the conversation surrounding Parkinson's disease on this channel. Okay, so we have three written stories and three videos. I feel extremely humbled by your willingness to share your personal story with basically over hundreds of people that you have never met. That is very brave. And first we have Sarah. For the past two years, I have felt something isn't right. I gave up jogging as I kept tripping up, and I had a bad fall, which knocked my confidence. I wake up at 2 a.m., and that's me. I have nightmares and terrible anxiety. My right arm has given up the need to swing, so it just hangs there. And boy, has my get-up-and-go just gone. I stutter and can't find the right words to come out. And yes, I now know what cramps feel like in my feet. I'm best friends with my toilet now and visit all the time. It has been 18 months since I went to the doctors who sent me to see a physiotherapist and my non-swinging arm, who couldn't find any cause for it not to swing, did lots of tests, said I didn't have MS, said I have face masking, which was news to me. I'm two years old and I work in a nursery. I sometimes feel 72. I live in England, and boy, it can get hold. Thank you, Sarah. This video is from Charlotte at the Owl. Hi, friends. I'm Charlotte, and I was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease in March of 2021 at the age of 51. I was shocked, to say the least, when I was told I had Parkinson's, as I'm sure most people were when they received their diagnosis. How it has affected my life, I choose to look at it in a positive light. And I say that because it's given me the opportunity to help other people, and that's fulfilling to me. I joined the Davis Finney Foundation as the Virginia ambassador, so I get to work with people in my state who are diagnosed or on the cusp of being diagnosed uh, to help them navigate this journey that we're on together. I also started a YouTube channel with exercise and motivational videos to encourage people to stay positive and to keep moving. Exercise truly is the best medicine. I think the most important thing that I gained from my diagnosis is a greater appreciation for the here and now. I always say there are no guarantees for any of us with or without Parkinson's disease. So I encourage you to just take things one day at a time, uh, find your positives, enjoy the moment, and the biggest takeaway is that you are not alone in this. We are in this together. And this letter is from Tori. My unknown Parkinson's journey began with a simple eye twitch, then a thumb, and pinky twitch in my early 40s. Who would have suspected that something so small and seemingly innocent would turn my world and my family's world upside down so slowly and so painfully? As this disease is not just about being a movement disorder, it can also cause debilitating limb and arm pain to where you think you have a different disorder like ALS. As I also have and can have muscles twitch in the thighs that can look like ripples of ocean waves or popping popcorn, I have had to learn through many years of all these mysterious symptoms that despite the pain, the frustrations and tears, it I'm still me. I've had to redevelop myself a bit as I can't ignore the truth of having Parkinson's as well now as Lewy body dementia, which is part of this disease for some. But all in all, I'm still the person God helped me create 58 years ago, and I plan on living my best remaining time to help others understand what Parkinson's looks like through my eyes. This video is from Jerry. Hello, Jerry from Chesterfield, Virginia. I'm here to say what Parkinson's means to me. I noticed a rapid decline in my work and activities. The shakes and the internal shakes, the stiffness in the limbs, 
less ability to deal with stress and heightened anxiety, depression and apathy, panic attack and anxiety while driving. My first diagnosis was Parkinsonism and had an MRI and the neurologist was uncertain so he sent me to a MDS specialist and I had to wait eight months. The second neurologist did a DAT scan and he came back and he pretty much said that I did not have Parkinson's. He was 90% certain. Said that I had Parkinsonism again as well. When I did a follow-up with him a few months later, he stopped me in the middle of a discussion and looked at me and he says, you know you don't have Parkinson's, right? So I really haven't gotten to the bottom of the Parkinsonism at this point in time. I was paralyzed in 1999. I blew all my potassium out was uh, the suspected reason of the paralysis. And I seen a very rare neurologist. Uh, he was a pediatric neurologist. And I'm beginning to wonder after doing some research and finding out that the ALS is one of the causing factors of Parkinsonism, if maybe that was why he and I met 30 years ago. And we just didn't figure out exactly all the pieces but I've suffered pretty much ever since the paralysis with leg pain and just struggling with strength trying to find an answer to the beginning of I guess my, my path moving forward and I guess it's, it's very unsettling to me to not have an answer but yet know that there's something still going on a year later and I've really yet to meet anybody directly that said they have Parkinsonism instead of Parkinson's. I've met a lot of great people um, so far with Parkinson's here and support groups here in Richmond. Several on the internet. Give a shout out to A Life with Parkinson's, Wiggles Project, and Jeremy McDonald. Uh, they've all been a tremendous help just to be able to communicate and relate with. And this is from Sharon. Before I was diagnosed, I battled with fatigue and apathy and cramping in my feet. I could tell I was getting slower and my mental abilities seemed to be off. My organizational skills were getting bad and I had a slight tremor in my left hand and jaw and an internal tremor in my chest. I'm having trouble with my hands, with cutting my food or buttoning buttons, and my balance is off and I frequently have restless legs. I think I look like I'm mad at the world most of the time. But I'm not. My mouth draws down if I don't purposely think to try and keep it from doing it. I'm going into my third year since diagnosis. I'm now on 6 centimet per day, Comp 10 3 times a day, and the Mantadine 2 times a day. I gotta tell you guys, when I read these stories, it just, it just cuts me right to the heart. Because I know, I know and I feel what you guys are going through. And it just makes me want to reach out there and give everybody just a big hug. I know that's impossible to do through the internet, but I'm sending every one of you a giant hug because I know what you feel like. And it hurts. Sometimes Parkinson's can hurt so bad, not just in the physical way, but in the mental way as well. When we individually battle these symptoms on our own, it's very difficult. And that's why I always say, let's take this journey together. How has Parkinson's affected my life? Well, all I got to do is go back and read a couple of those letters. Oh my goodness. For me, the single biggest symptom has been and continues to be anxiety. Just uncontrollable anxiety that just pops out when you least expect it. You know, I can wake up in the morning feeling great, and just bounce out of bed, go, yay, 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 it's another day. So within five or ten minutes of waking up, my on, my off time comes and just says, no, we're not going to feel good right now. We're going to feel really, really bad, and we're going to have a pile of anxiety until those morning pills kick in. And I just have to tell myself, I can't make any decisions right now. I can't think about anything serious. I can't check the internet for news. I've got to get down on my hands and knees and stretch out the morning dystonia and work out the morning anxiety. It's just a 
It's a repeated pattern. No matter how well I sleep, when I wake up, that anxiety is just there waiting for me like a big punch in the nose. Other times of the days, it comes on too, but the morning one is the worst. There's nothing I can do about it. My new rule is I don't leave the bedroom until I can walk. I should probably say until I can walk and talk normally. So thank you everyone for being patient for this video to come out. Thank you for sharing your stories. Let's all take this journey together. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Goodbye. And thank you.